Hello and welcome back. This video we will discuss embedding documents into your ePortfolio as well as creating links inside of your ePortfolio web links or hyperlinks, whatever you want to call them. So let's start with embedding documents. You might be a journalist or a journalism student. You might have a lot of news articles that you have written, whether it be for magazines or for a newspaper or for the web. You might have a lot of research papers that you've written and you want to be able to share that in your ePortfolio. You might have graphic design work or uh, InDesign work, page layout that you want to share on your ePortfolio. So how would you go about doing that? Well, Weebly utilizes a service called Scribed to help you embed documents. And when I say embed, what, I'm, what I mean is that it is actually inserted into the page and you can read and look through the document inside of the page without having to click and download something and having to go find it in your downloads folder and open it up. Uh, you really want to try to avoid that as much as possible in your ePortfolio. The reason being is if a potential employer is looking at your ePortfolio and they want to read something as simple as your resume but have to click on something and download it and then have to go find it in their downloads folder, you're taking them away from your ePortfolio and there is a very good chance that they'll lose interest in it and they won't come back to your ePortfolio. So we want to avoid that as much as possible and a really great way to do that is through embedding and not linking. So let's take a look at embedding a document. So I am on my uh, writing page in my ePortfolio um, as you probably would be with things that are written. So let's go over into our elements and over here on the left we notice that there is an element called document. And if I click and I drag it over into my page, I get this blank document. And as we can see, it has Scribed down here. And again, Scribed is the service that is basically making this function inside of Weebly. But inside of Weebly, it's really simple. Uh, using Scribed for WordPress is a little more difficult. It requires a lot more steps. So it's really nice and refined inside of the, the Weebly platform. So it automatically put in this blank document. Well, that blank document is not the document I want to share, obviously. So how do we upload or how do we put the one that we want if I click on it? And I get this dialog box that pops up. And you get to uh, adjust the size. So depending on the amount that you are, you know, maybe you have multiple news articles on the page, you might want to play around with some of these different sizes. I'll, I'll leave it at extra large just for the sake of this example. More importantly is this button that says upload file. And if I up, if I click that, we get this we get this window that we're pretty familiar with already, where you can drag and drop into it, or you can upload from your computer. I'll do that, and I'm going to go find. Uh, this is just a sample PDF that I've made, so I'm going to select that sample PDF. And after a f after a few seconds, we get our sample PDF embedded into the page. It, it changed out the default one into the one that we wanted. And so if I click publish, which again, remember to always click publish, and go take a look at my site, I'll go over into my writing page. There is my sample PDF embedded directly into the page. And, and, and hopefully you, you understand the word embedded a bit uh, better now because as you can see I'm scrolling through that whole PDF it's a two page PDF I'm looking at it I'm scrolling through it and I'm doing it all from within my uh, ePortfolio page and Scribed provides a really great uh, functionality where I can full screen that PDF and get to see it in large format which is really nice and I can exit back out of it so that's using Scribed and Weebly to embed a document. Let's take a, a look at like, uh, a Word document because you might have a mixture of PDFs, Word documents. In fact, the Scribe service 
allows functionality for quite a few different file types, but probably the, the most typical ones you're going to work with are PDFs and uh, Microsoft Word documents. So where's another page where we probably want to have a document? Well, that's our resume page, right? Because we probably want to have a resume on that page. So I'm going to come over into that, and it looks like on my resume page I have... I have that picture from our home page and welcome. I don't know why it's exactly the same as my home page, but that's not what I want. So I'm going to delete these out. And I'm going to come over to build. And once again, I'm going to find my document element and click in and drag it down. Click on it to upload a file and go find my sample Microsoft Word document and it's going to again take a second to do its thing and after it's done its thing we can see it's changed it to the Microsoft Word document that I uploaded and so if I publish it and take a look at my resume page there it is there is my Microsoft Word sample resume with all the same functionality as the PDF I can full screen it I can even zoom in and zoom out so that would be how I would add my Microsoft Word resume into my ePortfolio. So one final thing that you might want to do as you are creating your ePortfolio is creating links out to other websites. And I will say briefly that again, when we are doing this, this is one of those things where we are risking the viewer not returning to our ePortfolio. If, if we're linking out to other pages, they might, uh, the, the, the viewer, the potential employer might uh, click on those links and go out to see what you had to share, but might not ever return to your ePortfolio. So you want to really be not cautious, but you really want to use it sparingly uh, as you're developing your ePortfolio. Really tell, ask yourself, you know, do I really need to send out my uh, a potential employer out to this page? And I think there are times where it is justified and you have things that you want to share with them. But there's other times where maybe it's not such a good idea. So you'll just really have to, uh, you know, use your best judgment as you're developing your ePortfolio. Let's take a look at how we would add a link, though. I am going to move into, I don't know, I'm going to move into my About page. And I am going to add some text. You know, and somewhere on the About Me page, you know, I might say something along the lines of, I am a student at Elon University and I might want to click or I might want to link out to Elon University's web page um, you know as I'm talking about it and so to do that anytime I anytime I'm inside of a, a text box I can take my mouse and highlight what I want the link to be and I see that there's this little icon that looks like a chain and it says create link if I hover over it so if I if I click that I get a no number of options I get website URL standard page so I can link to another page this way I can if I had a e-commerce uh, site I, I could link to that I could also link to a file which is very similar to what we did with embedding a document. However, this uh, works a little bit differently, and I really recommend to ignore this and not do it this way. Do it through the embed document uh, element that we just looked at. We're only going to use this functionality really for linking to a web page. And so, what web page? Uh, www.elon.edu. And what is really, really important here is that you click on this open link in new window checkbox here. And 
uh, you might already have guessed that basically what that does is when I open up that link, it's going to open up in a new tab and, you know, a, a new tab that pops up and not in the same window. And the reason why that's really important is, is if, if we are going to decide to take the viewer away from our ePortfolio, the least we can do is make it a tab that can easily just be closed and that way you come right back the viewer comes right back into your portfolio where they were when they left so hopefully that makes sense to you but i i, I do uh really recommend that you make sure that you click that and that you just do that as a standard practice so i'm going to click the save button and right away we noticed that the text sort of changed it, it had that line underneath it i'm going to publish it let's take a look at it live on the web And here we are. I am a student at Elon University. And that line disappears and it highlights green. That's you know how we know that it's an active link. And if I click on it, voila, elon.edu opens up in a new tab. And I can check it out and look at whatever I want to do. And when I'm done, I can close that tab. And bam, I'm right back into the ePortfolio. So that is uh, just to demonstrate the importance of why you want to open it in a new tab. So that is adding and embedding documents into your ePortfolio and that is creating hyperlinks. And for the most part, we should feel pretty good. We've got a we've got a ePortfolio set up with the pages we want, the menu structure we want. We've got our media, we've got our photos, we've got our video uh, in, embedded, and we've got our writings and our PDFs and our resumes embedded into our ePortfolio. So for the most part, the work is done. So in the final video, we'll just take a very quick look at cleaning it up and maybe tweaking some, some minor things and really polishing it up and, and getting ready to share it with potential employers. So we'll see you in the next video.